Hey, young world, it's midday. This is Solo Way on Atlanta's number one hip hop station, Hot 1079. I'm just going to get right to it because we are talking to Peter Macon. He is one of the stars <laughs> of the kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Now, if you have not seen the previous Planet of the Apes, do you recommend that people go see that before they watch Kingdom? I mean, just to get you in the mood of talking apes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think, like, story wise, yeah, it, there are some nuggets that will make more sense if you have a sense of, you know, like I like to watch everything. Like, yeah. you know, so I recommend it. I'm not saying that it's necessary. Like you could watch this movie and really not have any uh, familiarity with the, the the past three films because this is his own thing. Yeah. But I think just in terms of the, the level, if you want to nerd out, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You really want to enjoy it. I would, I would do that because there's, a, you, you, you track, um, Caesar's character from the beginning, definitely, and then to into the to the end of his life in the third film, and then like this is three hundred years later, yeah, after he's gone. So, you know, I, I think if you really want to get the full experience, like I say, yes, but you don't have to because it stands on its own. I've seen them all, yeah. and I think that everyone should see all of them, mm-hmm. mainly for those little moments where you can put the things together. They, like, you yeah. really want to understand the character of Caesar yeah. Yeah. and why it was so important for your character, exactly. Raka, yeah. to speak life into him, to yes. remind people of who Caesar actually was, what right. he stood for. Right. Because the <clears> new <throat> Caesar, I don't want to put too much out there, but... Proximus is his own thing. He's I mean, not Caesaring. Like, he's, he's, not Caesaring. <laughs> like he, he's not Caesaring. He is not Caesaring at all. He I'm is like, not this is Caesar not the solid. foundation yeah. that, that Caesar set. Yeah. No, I mean, but, you know, truth, like people say that, you know, stories have a way of lasting longer than the truth. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like fables and stories. Say, say that again? Stories have a way of lasting longer than the truth. And so even in our own personal allegories, the way we remember things from our childhood may not necessarily be the way it went down. Right. But the way that we remember things serves for our, you know, self-preservation, our convenience yeah. and how we need to go about our life. Mm. And, you know, to that end, um, he may, Proximus Caesar may not necessarily be uh, the villain. Like, I know he's kind of the antagonist in this film because he's, Bonobos. He was definitely. Yeah, I mean, he's like a Tony Roberts, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's like he's very charming, and you know, but and he's not necessarily wrong. I was just gonna say, without I'm gonna keep saying, without giving too much away, there was a moment in the film where I had to look at Noah, who Uh is like I guess like supposed to be the newer hero. Um, There was a moment where him and another character. Nova, mm-hmm. human, mm-hmm. when she came to say her quote unquote goodbye, mm-hmm. and you I said, well, "Wait a wait minute, minute now!" And he said, <laughs> "Girl, humans can't be trusted." I said, Boom. "Proximus might have been right." Right. So there's, and so therefore, I think the greatness about this film is mm-hmm. that it leaves audiences with the conversation of like, "Hmm, hmm, who, who, like, on what, like, mm-hmm. where does this fall on the morality?" It's a thin line. It's a thin line. And so, and you also think about, you know, Mother Nature is a, is a huge component in this film in terms yeah. of, like, what, what does this planet look like if, you know, human beings fall off the, the top of the mountain in terms of being the apex predator and, you know, what and how nature reclaims, you know, itself um, with, like, growing over skyscrapers and, you know, just things mm-hmm. like that and, like, and what human beings get reduced to. Um, because human beings made the virus. It was so crazy. And, you know, so, I mean, and then you think about, like, COVID, you think about all this stuff, and I'm like, ah! You know, so there's a lot to think about with that. But, um, so, and so you walk away being like, well, you know, if, uh, you know, we really can't figure out how to coexist on this planet, uh, nature, uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. rising sea levels, earthquakes, uh, tornadoes and stuff in places that's not been... You really, I mean, so again, I go back to this thing of the morality tale. It's like, well, yeah. you really need to pay attention to what's going on because it's not uh, a guarantee no. that we, you know, if polar bears had thumbs, it would be a wrap. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> We'd be in a whole different situation. But yeah. um, but you know what I'm saying? And so, like, I really think it leaves audiences with that um, because, you know, bonobos in particular uh, uh, of the great apes 
are the closest to human beings, mm -hmm. more so than chimpanzees in terms of our DNA. Yeah. Our DNA, like yeah. like ninety eight percent, and 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 bonobos less than ninety, like like it's like ninety nine point one some. Anyway, so the practicality of you know of the, of of of, of it becoming self-aware yeah. and not unlike AI, um, you know, because we got to come in from both sides, you know, like yeah. the, the evolution. That's um, really what I wanted people to take away from that was yeah. like, look at it from the other perspective. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, the human species wants to be the dominant, powerful yeah, one. Yeah, All up. the other species, what yeah, they need to up. do, right. locking them up in cages, and right. then you turn around and see it in reverse, and you're right. like, oh my god. What are the apes doing to right. us? They doing to us what you we did to them. You would do the same thing. I mean, you know stop I mean? playing. <laughs> and then, and then, power corrupts because then you get yeah. like you, you, you know, you Proximus, you know, gains knowledge. Yeah. How he gains his knowledge, and wants to see his his folks and species do better. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to see them again. And he, and he when you are aware that you know they used to lock us up in cages, yeah. um, it really is a mirror. For a lot of like you know like Nat Turner um like just saying like yeah. um you know it's it's a it's a great mirror for us to look at. Was that really uh, like the the foundation of of the movies? Like, did they was that intentional? Did they want humans to see it that way? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Um, with and and not beating you over the head with a hammer, yeah, making it beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, but also you know as a cautionary tale, you know to. To really look at it and like a what if, and I think that's what we're so fascinated yeah. with, with with these stories. You know, like I know I personally love science fiction, and mm -hmm. I love, you know, um, different different uh, stories that, you know, dystopian and utopian stories about how we how we figure some stuff out like down the road. I mean, are we gonna like how, when, what what happens when the fossil fuels are, are gone? Yeah. You know, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. Maybe we're like you know, having cars and vehicles run on water. Electricity, solar power, but like there, there is a transition, you know what I mean? That that we really need to get underneath, you mm -hmm. know, because I mean I could go on, but you know, like um, electric vehicles are not the the saving grace that we uh, that everybody presents because the carbon Hello. footprint that is left by, <laughs> you know, and what and, yeah. and where the cobalt comes from. Let's talk about like the yeah. Congo, you know what I mean? We're you really just go trading down one for the other. Like we're not it's, really it's, moving it's, forward. Yeah, the needle, the needle is kind of doing that. Yeah. So I think that that's what's fascinating about um, these these movies because yeah. it's like it it really presents in a really believable way mm -hmm. that this is what it could look like if yeah. we don't get it together. We got to get um, it together. We got to get it together, people. Yeah. We got to get it together. So Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes <laughs> is out on May 10th. Yes, sir. Disregard what you might be seeing on the internet, people. The release date is May 10th. 10th. Okay, the man is telling you that from his very own mouth. Peter Macon, where can the people find you, support you? Um, I got, I'm up to like a lot of different things, but it's all under the umbrella on my basic my IG page, which is Peter Gerard Macon. Um, and so I have like clothing line and some music. Family and some, guy. You know, Oh, that stuff. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Preston Man's on Family Guy, y'all. Like, yeah. like, stop. Yeah, that's that's one of the most challenging <laughs> roles because I'm like, how do you like? He's the funny. He's <laughs> he's weird. He's just a weird dude. So you like, got a great to voice him. though. I uh, I can see it. Yeah, I can understand you. why you were you were Raka in in the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. You, you are. I mean, th this was exciting for me. Appreciate I am you. a Planet of the Apes fan. I feel like if you are on a flight. Watch whichever ones they got available, which oh. is usually all of them. <laughs> you know, so watch them all. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming in and talking no, to us. And, I, and I'm just happy that I got to see the movie before everybody else. Hello. Thank you. Bye.